So let's go to our next chapter, synchronizers. Before we understand how synchronizers work, let's talk about multiple synchronization scenarios. So the first question we should be asking is whether it is permitted to miss samples when you are passing data between two clock domains. For example, Phi 4, it is not necessary to capture each and every sample data. It is important that sampled value is accurate, but it's not important that you capture each and every data. Now, the second scenario can be that you actually want to capture each and every signal between clock domains, each and every value that is transmitted, you should be able to sample. So these are the two possible kind of synchronization scenarios. How this plugs into uh, CDC, we'll talk about that, but as in, as we move along, keep that in mind that there are two possible kind of synchronization scenarios which are possible. One, in which you want to capture each and every data which is transmitted. Two, where you don't want to capture each and every data which is transmitted, but you want to ensure that whatever value is captured is accurate. And one example of that, where you want value to be accurate, may not want to capture all data, is FIFO point. So we had talked about that between asynchronous clocks, you cannot avoid metastability. So if the clock or async, you cannot avoid metastability, you cannot avoid. So what do you do? And we had talked about that you can actually neutralize the metastability. So how the metastability can be neutralized is by using a synchronizer. So this is the simplest synchronizer which is possible. And what is happening in this synchronizer? This is the transmit flop. This is your receive flop. And after receive flop, you have added one more flop. And these two flops, then when combined together, is, are known as This is this pair of flop is known as synchronizer. Okay, so this is how you create the simplest synchronizer. Now, how does this synchronizer behave? How how does it neutralize the meta -speed? So let's take uh, multiple examples to understand that. So here, data is changing as we very close to clock edge. Now, what happens because of that is with this flop, B data one here will become metastable. So B data one became metastable here. After some time, B data one here stabilized and settled to value one. It settled to value one. It can settle to any value, zero or one. It just, just in this case, it settled to value one. And when it settled, that was before the clock edge. So B data settled before the clock edge. Now, when this flop captures data, it is capturing a settled value. So B data two, the D input of B data two, when it is capturing a value, it is capturing a settled value. Now B data two, because of that, because the value is already settled, it is meeting setup and hold time, is not metastable. So B data two is not metastable. So now you must be thinking, that I said you can neutralize the metastability, you cannot completely avoid it. But this here in this particular case, it's being avoided. So what do we mean by 
you are just neutralizing the motor stability. Let's see another case. Okay, so in this case, T data one settled in one cycle before one cycle. It is possible, as if you remember the previous chapter, that it can take any amount of time for data to stabilize. So in this case, your data changes to clock edge. Because of that, B data becomes metastable. Now, this metastability is not settled in one cycle. And because it did not settle in one cycle, when on the deep end of it, when the clock edge comes, a metastable value value is captured. So B data two captures a metastable value and B data two is still metastable. So you have two back to back flops, you created a synchronizer, your output is still metastable. Okay. So if metastability is not resolved in one cycle, two back to back flops synchronizer can cannot rem totally remove metastability. 